Hello everyone and welcome back to the Oak Island Research Channel. Uh, I'm Olivier, as you kind of know now if you've been following my videos. And we're gonna approach a new kind of video, uh, La Rochefoucauld map. Uh, we've been decoding a lot and the more you decode, the less there is to decode, of course, unless we missed a layer of coding, which is very possible. You probably saw dot to dots video from yesterday, which is a beauty. Uh, so basically, at the end of the day, we know where to drill four holes that are very promising and it's not very expensive compared to all the holes that have been drilled on this island. So I will divert a little bit and continue the story because as of today, after so many hours of video, we still don't know who created and when was created the La Rochefoucauld map. And whatever we find, um, we must admit those maps were very instructive. This map was very instructive. It gave us knowledge we didn't have. Um, tangible knowledge, like uh, uh, alignment uh, of many very remarkable point of interest that we couldn't have otherwise. Remember how we came up that uh, dot to dot was following his method, a geometrical approach. I was decoding the map and we found out we were talking about the same thing. So the map is valid, whether it's a hoax, whoever created it, it, it we, we strongly believe it's valid. And it possibly, possibly it, it revealed more information. The fact there is a way to flush the water out of the trap, the, the fact that there are several stops to make, that there are probably other caches outside of the island. Is this true or not? We don't know. And we won't know until we drill those four holes. Um, so that, that, that's a remarkable piece of information. But the question still hangs by curiosity, whether valid or not, who wrote it, for what purpose, and when. So welcome to our little Cluid Oak, Cluid Oak Island, um, with, with uh, trying to determine who wrote the La Rochefoucauld map. That's, that's what we're going to play. And that's the part one of several videos. I'm going to introduce you to the protagonists, the people that were hanging around these maps when they were discovered, and what they have to say about it. That's very interesting. So before I start, um, we considered in the past that the material we've been working on, La Rochefoucauld map, basically, were maybe not public domain, but were copied enough. And Zina is not with us anymore. She published this on the, her website. It was on TV. We feel the right to use that pretty freely. But the, the, the documents I'm going to show you now are under copyright by their authors, supposedly their authors or whoever they belong to now. And they're issued from two books I'm going to introduce you to and already talk about in the past. Um, I checked, and it took me some time, um, to understand what was a fair use and what was the fair use legal framework or doctrine about and would it allow us to use this material. Uh, I'm French, and if I was on a French YouTube platform, if we had the equivalent publishing in France, I'm under the French laws that says you can, for research and education, fr freely use any document. But because I'm posting on YouTube, which is based in the US, uh, I need to be um, in, in, in agreement with the US law, which uh, YouTube explains very well. They probably got several cases in the past. And uh, so in the US, works of commentary, criticism, research, teaching, or other reporting may be considered fair use. And you do not have without the copyrights owner permission. So I'm going to use some material from Donald Rue. And Mr. Rue, if you're following our cast, broadcast, um, then, then please, uh, I've got nothing against you. It's just I, I, I would like to move forward with all those elements. And it seems the US law is allowing me to, uh, based on the fact of those four principles, uh, purpose and character of use, whether a commercial nature. No, I'm not trying to sell anything to anybody. Non-profit educational, yes, uh, unless this video hits 4,000 views per year or 4,000 hours of view, then I'm going to start making money by the YouTube monetization, but I don't even wish, so it's not the purpose of all what we're doing. It's not to reach that level. So I consider this is non-commercial nature. Uh, copyright of the work, it's a book. Amount of sustainability of the portion used, yes, of course. If I, if I, if I type the whole book, those 450 pages, that's a breach of copyright. Uh, so you, you're allowed to take elements for your thesis or your educational purpose, but you can't take the whole book or 
everything in there, which is okay because I'm only taking samples. And the effect on the use and potential market. So again, um, those books I say are very, very useful for a quest. Uh, I discovered many things in there that really help us with the Laos Foucault map and with dot to dot. Maybe not now, maybe later, but there are information and there's some ciphered information I will reveal to you in, in Donald Rue's book. Um, and I entice you to buy those books. And I show you this three version of Donald Rue's book. So I'm not, I'm not really putting down those books. I say they are very interesting for what we're doing. They're just a bit peculiar. Okay. Now that those uh, statements have been made, let me move to the next uh, slide. So who done it? This is a Cluedo. We got four people that are either in direct contact with the La Roche-Foucault map at the point of its discovery or who are quoted regularly by the people who have. So we got Donald Heyru, um, who introduces himself as a researcher um, is a friend, he says, of William Jackson. They know each other since they're five or six year old, kind of neighbors of summer holiday. And uh, very interesting, Donald Rook created that book named The Scrolls of Anteora. And that book is made of several bits and pieces, not very well organized. The picture number doesn't match the reference page it's supposed to be. Some letters are missing in some paragraph. It's a very, very hermetic book. And three quarter of it deals with the chase of the Templars near Hunter Mountain in, in New York. And the last quarter deals with those maps on Oak Island. And some very odd, strange oddities I will get back to in that book. Uh, so Donald Eru was a, a friend from childhood with William D. Jackson. And William D. Jackson, as we learn in Donald Rue's introduction about Bill Jackson, uh, was kind of an adventurer. And uh, Bill Jackson was always looking for treasure quests and, and, and looking for information on those. And is the, the person who brought all those elements, according to Donald. All the material we got on Oak Island and we're working with come originally from Dr. William Jackson. Uh, I'm not sure about the D. I'll double check the D for the initial. I'm not sure. But that's, that's interesting because he's kind of a, a source of many of the documents. And he himself, Dr. Jackson, was working for somebody named Dan Spartan from the Spartan organization. William Jackson got his uh, doctorate degree on the late, uh, on the field, and he worked for the U.S. Army in chemical, and he went to Vietnam, obviously. And he, Dan Spartan is kind of mysteriously presented as a, uh, the Spartan organization that uh, does things for the CIA. That's, that's what Donald Rue introduces in his book. And funny enough, Donald A. Rue introduces William Jackson to us as a childhood friend who, with whom he went through a lot of adventure. And William Jackson passed away and gave most of his material to Donald Rue. Um, and William Jackson was working for Dan Spartan and introduced Donald Rue to Dan Spartan, that CIA organization. Well, officially it was a camera and surveillance material, the Spartan company. And Donald worked for Dan Spartan at one point in time, according to Donald. Zina came into play a bit later, as Zina is, a, I checked her background record. She's an official historian uh, with degrees, with theses, somebody serious who um, joined effort in the research of Templar Trail in Hunter Mountain in New York with Donald Heyru and Donald shared material with Zina, material he got from William Jackson, and part of the material revealed to be uh, the La Roche-Foucault map that was discovered at Zina House, hidden in a book. So all those people um, are very interesting. Zina, we know, and we got proof of record who she is and what she did in her career. Donald Eru is a bit more mystical. He introduces himself. Please note both his parents were Swiss from the French speaking part of Switzerland. And that rang a bell when I discovered that. So they are Swiss migrants. Um, William D. Jackson, that's the only picture I've got of him. 
that was from that is the picture is in Donald Eru's book, The Scroll of Anteora, and it's the only picture we have. I tend to think sometimes that William D. Jackson is the best imaginary friend of Donald Eru, but I'll get back to that. And we got somebody we don't even have a picture and doesn't show on any Google record or nothing, neither his company or anything, is Dan Spartan. And I discovered that this person must be 160 years old from some writing as I'll get. But I'll get back to this. I'm kidding, of course, 160. But very enigmatic, very enigmatic. It's like the puppet master in this story. All right, let's move on. So what do these people have to say about the very moment the uh, La Rochefoucauld map was discovered? So I'm quoting pages of Zina Halpen's book. She says, two documents, the La Formule Cipher and an Oak Island map, and side note, this is the La Rochefoucauld map, and La Formule, okay, were found by accident hidden in the back book of a book belonging to Dr. Jackson. So the book they found that map, according to Zina, which I think is most of the time truthworthy, used to belong to Dr. Jackson. The two books, there was another book involved, had been, she repeats, belonged to Dr. Jackson, which had been forwarded to us by a member of the Spartan Agency. So forwarded to us, I'm not sure it was the us, if she includes Donald Rue in this, or just herself. And here comes the Spartan Agency that forwarded to Zina and whoever, probably Donald Rue, a book that used to belong to Dr. Jackson. That's what she says in her book, page 261. And then she goes, in Christmas 2011, so 10 years ago now, Harry Weimer, she described as a French teacher, and Don Roux were visiting Zina. And Don Roux had, has, has shared and lent those books to Zina before, and he was just visiting her in Christmas. Following a hint in the form of a handnote left uh, in one of the two books, and according to Zina, the handbook was the handnote was written by Dr. Jackson, she says in her book, uh, someday I'll show you the spelling because that's important, the way he was writing. And she says, Don was sitting in my kitchen, Don Roo, and was leafing along, uh, through this book and felt something thick in the back using a knife he sliced open and see the back pocket with the La Rochefoucauld map and the La Formule hidden inside. So that story says that, according to Zina, it's a member of the Spartan agency that forwarded the book to Zina and somebody else. And that book used to belong to Mr. Jackson. And in the back of one of the book was hidden La Formule and La Rochefoucauld, which were discovered by Don during a Christmas event at Zina. That's Zina's version. And the version you can find in this book you should acquire. Okay, so what's Donald Rue's version? On page 311 of his book, it says, Bill, this is William Jackson often refer to Bill as Bill is, you know, diminutive of William, obtained documents from Roquefoucauld, Dudonville family, including the La Rochefoucauld map. Side note, several times Don Roux spells La Rochefoucauld wrong and use La Roquefoucauld. It's got nothing to do, even forgetting an E there. And I start to know who Don Alor is. He's a very meticulous and precise guy. Oh, yes, he is. So I suspect this is on purpose. There's something in there, but I haven't had time to get on it yet. But let's, let's keep that as a side note. He carries on. So the document was in a small pocket made of gluing the last two pages of a book that corroborates Zina. Here we go. Bill Jackson, I forgot the word, passed it to someone who passed away. So Bill, I've got the name in the book. I didn't want to quote that person, but Bill Jackson gave that book in which those maps were hidden, to somebody who passed away. And the executor of the estate of that somebody who passed away either knew Donald Rue or written on the testimony he should be contacted, but he asked Donald Rue if he wanted it, and Donald Rue said yes. And then he shared it to Zina. Nowhere there, the Spartan organization provides those books to nobody, unless the Spartan organization is Donald Rue. And what's the us in Zina paragraph? I'm not going back. You can rewind the video if you wish. But something doesn't match there. Zina claims it's the Spartan group that gave those documents to us, whoever is us. And Donald say he got it from the executor of the estate of somebody who passed away. Bill Jackson gave it to that somebody. 
And then he shared it to Zina, no mention of any Spartan group there. And I'd like you to pay attention. So that, that, that's, that's the main, that's the, the 80-20 percent law of, of how that book was found and already the version differ. Um, and, and you'll see that many times, this is the two source book of this story. And when we compare them, some stories differ a lot. But again, we make more videos about this. And this is an Eastern egg. It's a very interesting Eastern egg coming up. About La Formule on page 314. Donald writes, Bill, we have Jackson, thought something may have been broken into eight pieces. He implies the eight pieces will reveal how to get the water out of the tunnel. Wow. So La Rochefoucauld map explains us how to get the water out of the tunnel of Oak Island. But in the book of Donald Rue, he says, but does not mention where these tunnels are located. Is it Oak Island, Luxor, or Karnak? In Egypt, huh? Luxor and Karnak. We just don't know, he says. What a peculiar sentence. Everything's revolving around Oak Island. The map, the direction, the hidden message. And that person, Donald Rue, who found that map and who claims that he got it from somebody who passed away who got it from Bill Jackson, Say, Bill thought, so he must have talked with Bill about it. It's not written. It's not Bill wrote. Bill thought. There must have been something that's been exchanged through our time between the two friends. May have been broken into eight pieces. Uh, and, of course, we got picture. I got picture of the pieces. I'll show you that someday. It implies the eight pieces will reveal how to get the water out of the tunnel. And it does. And it goes along with what we discover. You have to operate uh, in a service tunnel, something to get the water out. And he mentions that in his book, Donald Rue. That person, I think he knows more than we think he knows. He knows a lot more than, than we believe he knows. He's a, he's a principal character in our, in our hint. Uh, if you want to have a look at this, that, that URL, I know it's a bit long, but you can shortcut. You can type in Google Scrolls of Anteora, the name of the book. And when you do that, you reach a page, a Google page, where Google Books sometimes give you a preview of a book by giving you away some pages. A little story I'll tell you again is, is that, that that Google page changed 48 hours after I first mentioned it. I think, Donald Rue, you're listening to me, and I'm very happy you are. Uh, and you asked Google to change the pages that were available because that was not very appropriate for you to have those hanging around the net. But lots of pages can be found here, including the pages with those pictures. Uh, and you can have a look at it if you wish. Uh, just type in Scrolls of Anteora, Google Books, and you'll have those previews, right? And that book, uh, many editions. I first bought the black and white edition. That's cheap on Amazon. Uh, but um, I wanted a better uh, color picture resolution. So then I spent 160 U UK pounds. That's bloody $200 to buy the color version. And I don't regret it. And I'll show you why later. And I came to know there was a first edition. Now I'm thinking of buying the first edition just to compare what's the difference between the first edition and the second edition. Because Mr. Wu smartly must have put hints in his book about things that matters to us. Voila. So that was an introduction. And in my hints scrapbook at the moment, I have those elements. Zina Halpen rushed to publish her book, knowing she didn't have many more years to live. She passed away just a year or two later, after I'm not sure, and I don't want to upset anyone, but I knew she knew she had cancer, that's what I believe, and uh, she had to rush to write her book with, indeed, some imprecision. She claims that 1347 is a date, and we very well know now it's a scale and a distance and not a date, but she didn't have time to investigate. She wasn't fluent French. So... That's an element that's important in our story is that she rushed to publish her book and, and she did it uh, using material shared by Don Rue and who claims they used to belong to Peter, uh, to William Jackson without his authorization, creating a conflict between the two. And, and Don talks about it on his book and is very sad and he wants some material back and etc. cetera. Uh, very important clue. Don Rue had the book whether you take it from Zina Halper's statement or his, he had the book at hand someday, sometime, before he shared it with Zina. 
those books, he, he had them at home, either through the channel somebody passed away and the executor of the testimony um, of uh, uh, testament, sorry, uh, gave him the book, or he got them uh, through uh, the organization named Spartan, according to Zina. But he had those books at hand at one point in time before Zina saw them. So it is not impossible for him to insert those maps inside the back cover, the glue page himself and pretending to find them by chance and surprise on the Christmas in 2011 at Zenas. I'm not saying it did. I'm saying it is possible. The, the materialist, the, the material approach, uh, the circumstances, I don't, I don't have much police vocabulary in my English, but the circumstances can make it happen. It is not impossible. And I'm not saying it happened. I'm saying it is not impossible. And finally, William Jackson is going to be our prime suspect here because he's the one who originally owned all the material that those people are working with and we're working with. So that's, that's our clue at Oak for today. I'm just having the introduction about who's who and, um, and how they were involved in the discovery of those documents, which are La Formule and the La Rochefoucauld map. Voilà. Thank you very much for watching. We're going to have part two, three, and four, and more. And new surprises. Next video, we see there is a second La Rochefoucauld map somewhere. That is a bit different from the one we have at the moment, but that's for later. Take care, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.